Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome back to Anime King. And yes, today I'm gonna be giving you a brand new series. Given that I finished one yesterday, but there's still a sequel left to come, I'm gonna be starting a new one for now. What if Naruto learned black magic from a spirit? Part 1, guys. Remember to get this one to 100 like. Comment down below and tell me what you think and if you want me to continue it guys. And I'll be making sure to continue for you guys to enjoy. And also guys, stay tuned for the rest of what is coming your way over and making 2 and making 3. If you're new, yes, I did have 3 channels and making and making 2 and making 3. Which I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the making family. Thank you for all of your help and support and yeah. Without further ado, what do you say we begin this new episode? Start the intro. Namikaze, though he did not know it yet, Uzumaki Naruto was currently in crisis. Yes, this three-year-old child with short, blonde spiky hair and blue eyes, natural tan skin, and three whisker marks on each side of his face, was in extreme trouble. The old man had told him never to go outside on October 10th, but he was curious about the festival. And also it was his birthday. So following his three-year-old logic, he left the safety of his lonely apartment to follow his curiosity. Yes, he had an apartment at the age of three, something completely unheard of, even to most of the ninja populace. However, it wasn't because he was a prodigy, as most people didn't even want to look at him without glaring, let alone teach him anything. It was because the orphanage had refused to take care of him. So of course a three-year-old child wanted to see why those people they were having fun, right? It was foolish for the third to believe that he would ever stay inside. As he left his apartment and walked down the main road, completely oblivious to all the glares and chuckling that followed him. As he looked on in wide eye, in amazement at all the pretty colors lining the streets, all of them just sparkling in front of him. As he saw everything like a child would do. But the villagers on the other hand, they did not believe that he was a child. They believed that he was a beast, the 90th fox, that attacked their village and slaughtered so much of their loved ones, who had attacked their village only three years ago. The three whisker marks on his cheeks seemed to further enrage him that he was out to get them all and he would kill the rest of them as well. Human stupidity is quite large. And what they don't understand, they decide to destroy it. He was attacked viciously most times, but Naruto did not know because Hiruzen had made a choice. He had a Yamanaka erase those memories, hoping that this would make the child live a normal life. There was no lasting wounds or scars, mental or physical, so Hiruzen believed that he was doing the best for Naruto. By now the boy was standing in the middle of the festival. He was completely ignorant of how everyone quieted when they saw him because he sensed no danger as all of them stopped. Until finally, one of them spoke. The demon is here, he shouted. Now we can finish what the fort started. Following traditional mob mentalities, 68.2% of the villagers nodded in unison, while the other, 31.8, was completely out cold from drinking. They started chasing him at first. Nurka thought it was some kind of game as he started to run, until a bottle smashed in the wall, almost hitting him. He glanced behind him as he saw, they picked up some sort of weapons and they were yelling hateful words towards him. They were coming after him to hurt him. Adrenaline kicked in as he ran, scared for his life. As he was trying to run as fast as possible as his three year old legs could carry him, trying to outrun all of them. But he was still just three years old and he was not fast enough as he was caught. A minute later, now here he was in a sack, 
as he was being tugged and dragged out into a forest. As he kept on being poked by a pointed stick. As he heard, you should just die out here demon. He was thrown while in the sack as he crashed hard. As Naruto managed to undo the binding at the top. As he crawled out of the sack. He didn't know why but he had a feeling that this happened before. But he did not know that this happened many times before. And his memory was erased several times. He was surrounded by tall trees. As he could not even see the cloud ahead. The forest was so massive as the trees blocked out the sky. He started to wander around a little bit. As he came up on a cave, not just an ordinary cave, it had beautiful lights that mesmerized his three-year-old mind. As they seemed to be moving, he tried to grab one of them, but they were out of his reach. He ended up falling unconscious right there and then, as the lights were rather soothing. Unknown to him, he was being watched. As the person wondered why the child parents hadn't come looking for him by now, the shadowy figure stepped out in the darkness. Its eyes focused on Ruto. It looked around for a possible search party being found to find the boy. The figure walked out and came across a Berlin sack. As the figure saw blonde hair inside the sack, the child was dragged in this. As the figure saw the drag markings going back to the village that was off in the distance, was the child kidnapped and left out here to die? The parental instinct inside the figure went into overdrive. As the person scooped up the small child, the figure was shocked as the child was so light. Too light, this was not natural. As it checked over the child, the child should be dead from malnutrition by now but yet, it was somehow still alive and he was just moving around a few hours ago, trying to catch a pretty lights as he called him. This child was intriguing indeed. The figure decided since it had nothing else to do while it was here, it will take care of the boy. Who knows, it could just be an act of grand salvation for it. The next day, the members that were locked away, as they could not be fully erased from his mind but they were sealed. Waking up in a cold, cold, cold stony cave, they start to resurface but the child didn't focus too much on them. He looked around a bit as he expected to see Hokage Jite and he wondered why he was in the hospital. He blinked. Why did he thought that? Why would he be in a hospital he didn't know? Why that just came through his mind? But he was in some sort of hollowed out place. He wasn't sure. As he looked over he saw a few cushions. There was a bed that looked like it was slept in recently. Up against the back wall of the cave. After looking around a bit, he collapsed once again. The lot memories of being here had finally broken open and flooded his mind with a lot of certain situations that he hadn't been in before well he thought that he had not but it was just too much for his young mind as about noon Naruto finally awoke these new memories as he tried to sort through them he was rather surprised was he stabbed as he looked towards himself but there was no wound on him was he hit in the face but there was no marking was he hit in the eye but his eye was fine you could see what was going on he didn't really understand he realized that the memory must have been a dream yeah a real bad dream he then realized he wasn't alone inside the cave as he only realized it when a soft hand was laid on his shoulder using instincts that he didn't even know he had he curled up on himself his conscious mind was asking why did he do that but he didn't really know it just felt natural after a few moments of absolutely nothing, he slowly uncurled to look at who touched him. It was a rather pretty woman. She was dressing outlandish clothing. The first thing that struck him was her eyes though. More specifically her one eye. Her other was covered by her hair. It was a bright red and a flicker of emotion swimming through it. Made her look a bit older than she appeared. Her black hair was tied back into a knot with a band coming down in her face blocking her other eye. Her lips had purple lipstick on them, as it fit well with the creamy look of her face, as there was a lot of necklaces around her neck, a lot, ranging from pearls to beads to shiny bright stones. She was wearing a bordering black purple dress, with patterns over it that he could not make out. The front of the dress was rather open, 
and she was also carrying a stuff doll in one arm as it looked like a knight wearing a pumpkin for a hat it looked rather cute it was colored in a pale yellow and a bright red finally breaking away from her clothing he looked up as he met her face as he smiled wearily wondering why his subconscious was telling him to stay away that he was gonna get hurt he didn't know why but she smiled back in a kind gesture and pat him on the head like one would do a dog his first words were who are you are you gonna hurt me he didn't know why he said that needless to say the woman was staggered back at the realization that he was left out here for dead as she dropped the doll to the floor if Naruto was paying attention good he would have noticed that it landed on his plushy feet and it stood up she slowly walked towards him as she didn't want to startle him as she picked him up in her arms as her motherly instinct kicked in regardless of the fact that his eyes were wide in fear and tears were threatened to spill as his subconscious was winning the war telling him to curl up into a tiny ball so he wouldn't get hurt but she did not hurt him instead she just held him after three hours of finally convincing him that she wasn't going to hurt him she finally introduced herself as Lulu when he inquired on her odd name she simply said that she was foreign he introduced himself as he asked why he was here as she asked why he was pulled and dragged out here in the sack he told her that the villagers disliked him for some reason and he did not know why his memories were all jumbled. she tapped him right between the eyes as a purple aura was around her finger and everything snapped into place as Naruto became focused they all firmed up the Hokage had someone messed with my memory said Naruto this also shot the woman wonder what the three-year-old could have experienced that Hokage had to lock away his memories she tapped her chin thoughtfully her magical senses were going haywire around this boy for some reason she was determined to find out why she politely asked if you'd mind if she did something to him she was quite vague he was confused but he accepted as she expanded her consciousness into her magic the purple aura flared to life once again using her magic she found out that he was a jinjuliki a human sacrifice a human container and he contained a nine tail fox Naruto did you know there was a nine tail demon fox sail inside you she asked he blinked rapidly at that knowledge until everything clicked into his mind he dropped to the ground as he starts to fall into this spear so that is why the villagers hate me I am the Kayubi he said no she said as he paused she explained to him quite frankly that he was not the fox he was a human the fox was simply placed inside of him by a seal the fort of used use him as a vessel probably because of his date of birth Naruto would you like to meet the fox that way you could ask him more about your life because I'm sure that he would remember your memories the technique that was used probably did not affect the fox as Naruto nodded she tapped him on the forehead once again and he fell into a deep slumber as Lulu found herself in a sore she looked around as she saw Naruto sitting there she tapped him on the shoulder before she picked him up as she moved towards the sewer stepping deeper into it upon reaching they both realized that the fox was big really big over a hundred feet tall big they couldn't really see the top of the cage but there was no light up there it was pitch black the bars were held together by a paper with a conjifer seal on it a menacing echoing snore a growl of sorts broke the silence startling boat Lulu walked up towards the bars as she smacked it as a renowned boom could be heard she had to move back as claws emerged as she narrowed her gaze as two menacing red eyes focused on her and Naruto the fox growled seeing that he did not like to be awoken as Lulu slammed her hands together before she released a lightning spell the place became bright as Naruto saw it, his three-year-old mind did not sense the danger. As he saw the fluffy fox, so he ran right through the bars. As he jumped and crawled up on top of the fox's head. 
That was rather shocking for the Nine Tails. As it froze, not only weren't they not surprised by his appearance, but the child was now on top of his head. But then the child did something that pissed them off and at the same time made him happy because he would never admit it there was a spot that he could not reach. But Naruto started to play around and scratch the fox's head. Lulu came inside and removed the child from the fox's head. Much a disappointment of Naruto and much a disappointment of the fox as well, who finally had that spot scratch. As Lulu told him that this was a fox's death is seal. As Naruto asked a question that was burning on his mind, no, it wasn't why you attacked the village. Can I pet your ear some more? He asked. Lulu and the fox draw drop at the question. Well, they had to consider he was just three years old. The fox did not answer. So the child took it as acceptance as he ran back up. Crawling up on his nose, he moved back towards his ear. Two hours later, after answering, because I felt like it, and I was there and they fought, so I fought back. The fox was rather vague on why he exactly attacked the village. He didn't seem like he wanted to tell them more. But he was curious though. Brett, why is there a black mage inside your mind? They were all supposedly dead. A thousand years ago, the final one, being Lulu, a summoner of the guardians. She's Lulu, said Naruto. The fox was shocked at that as he narrowed his gaze towards the woman. He seemed to study her for a moment until he asked something that confused Naruto, but Lulu seemed to understand. Your soul could not move on, could it? There is something tying you to the realm of the living. Lulu now had to explain that she was an unsent soul, one who has ties to the realm of the living, or something that he had to do that they could not forget. She retained her human dinner sente by secluding herself away from the world, not having to deal with the jealousy of the living ones normally, gets when their soul still live without a body. As Naruto was confused by that, he didn't know if the fox understand. Speaking of the fox, he didn't like that the fox destroyed the village, but the fox asked him a question, why do the villagers attack you? As Naruto respond was, because they felt like it. Oh, the same thing the fox had said. Truly, it seems like human stupidity knew no bounds. The villagers were just as bad as the fox in that regard. Lulu picked up the child to leave after, bidding goodbye to the fox. She was debating whether or not to keep the child, before she first remembered how he acted when meeting her. That sealed the deal. She was going to raise him as her own and teach him to become a black mage like her. Maybe they could make a deal with the Kyube to help out. Meanwhile, within Kanoha, Sir Tobu was having a good day. The festival honoring the Kyube defeat had gone off without a hitch, and he didn't have to get a Yamanaka to erase Naruto's memory. Sealed him away once again. Speaking of the boy, he hasn't seen him in two days. He quickly pulled out his crystal ball as he started to search for the boy Chucker Signature. What he saw puzzled him. The boy was in a cave and he was talking with a black hair red eye woman, red eye. For a moment the Kayube came to mind seeing the woman red eyes, but that was cut off when the woman looked up towards him, almost like she could actually see him looking at her, but that was not possible after all. Despite being the Hokage of the village, he had a bit of perverted side, and he knew that no one could see him after all. He's used this once or twice to look inside of the woman, bath houses, but the woman kept on looking up like she was looking directly at him. Then, crack, the ball broke. With a strange energy that did not feel like chakra, as it shattered into pieces. The final images, being the woman looking up at him with a glare. Hiruzen was shocked. Nothing like this had ever happened before. He, luckily, had a second crystal ball. As he shoved the shards of the previous crystal ball in the trash, but this time, when he tried to find Naruto, he could not. Immediately, he called for his envoy to search for the boy and to bring in that woman for questioning. But that was going to be a real long search. First, they were searching for the demon and they were also searching for a woman with black hair and red eyes. That fit the description of Kurna Yuai and not to mention most Uchiha women when they activate their Sharingan. A week passed and there was nothing few more days and there was absolutely nothing. 
as Harrison couldn't believe it. He could not find Naruto anywhere. What if that was real Takeyubi? That was somehow able to trick Naruto to make him believe that she was a good kind lady. And then she killed him. After a long search, Harrison had to believe that the boy was dead. As there has been nothing to show that he was still alive. With the information that he was now dead, the law about not telling the younger ones, well that was no longer important. As the parents told the children that there was once a demon boy who used to live within Kanoha. Flashback. As Naruto saw Lulu looked up in the ceiling, she frowned. As Naruto could swear that he heard a cracking sound but there was nothing around to crack. She then placed a hand on him as he felt a weird sensation. As she told him what she had did and how the Hokage was spying on him. As Naruto was quite angry at the Hokage refusing to call him JJ anymore at the revelation that he had deemed him as a flight risk for good reason due to his treatment and there was also a mark on Naruto so Harrison could better sense him using crystal ball. He also tagged him so he can watch them. As Lulu would tell him that most ninja senseis would not teach him anything because of his status within Kanoha, a lot of the other villages were inhumane in their teaching practices or they turned their people like him into living weapons so Naruto agreed to become her apprentice. Black mages according to Lulu had to be level headed at all times. Their destructive magic was too powerful to go on a killing spree as they might end up leveling the entire area. As Naruto agreed to her terms as he started to change his behavior accordingly. Lulu also told him the significance of a weapon. While ninjas use their weapons for attacking, black mages use theirs as a channel for more powerful spells as well as slight weapons. Most black mages were physically weak, preferring to evade and deflect physical attacks so they would not have to deal with them. Lulu's weapon, she told him, was her doll. She showed him how she used it as a conduit for her energy. As she showed him, as it mimic her actions, as Naruto decided he wanted an awesome doll like the one that she had. She thought this over for a minute as the idea popped in her head as she told Naruto. Because he was still a child, the smirk on his face, it just made him look cute. As he went into his mindscape to blackmail or convince the fox to agree, said fox was not willing to be a plush toy no matter what. But Naruto brought out the, well, ultimative. He would refuse to scratch a point of his ear until he agreed. Now that kind of crumbled some of his resolve as he really liked the scratching but Lulu swing the deal as the fox will be able to attack and crush those who Naruto deem as enemies. Well that was better than mid sealing here but his power would be sealed into the plush toy. She also told him that he will have a helping hand in the more destructive arts of black magic as the fox smirk at the thoughts of the destructive devastation and the higher spells that a mage could use. A complex ritual later Naruto was the owner of. A plushy nine-tailed fox. He was about a foot in height. He was the same coloration of the real Kayube with the same eyes as well. It would look rather menacing if it wasn't being held by a three-year-old. Lulu started to write down what their training schedule would be. Starting with him forgetting everything that he knew about Chakra, Mana was different. As she almost fell flat in her face, she had to remember that he was just 3 years old. He hadn't even went to the ninja academy. And you wouldn't know what the hell she was talking about. Mana, she elaborated, is the spiritual component of chakra, which is composed of spiritual and physical energy. Chakra is less abundant in nature than mana, which is why black mage use it more. And as opposed to chakra, if you use up all of your mana, you do not die. To access your mana, you will have to meditate a lot. This means you have to void yourself of any emotion and spread your consciousness through every part of your body to find your mana source. Lulu was surprised. The boy was able to get it quickly. Those idiotic stupid villagers never gave him a chance. If they did, they would know that the boy was a really talented student. As she started teaching him how to control his mana, starting with the animation of the plush toys, the KUB was pissed off at this point. Not only was he a plush toy but he was immobile until the brat learned how to be a mage. 
This was gonna take a while. Time skip. Two years later. Naruto had learned how to animate his doll even, improving on it a bit. He stashed a bit of his money into the doll so it could move on his own, something that Lulu never tried. It probably wouldn't have worked anyway because her dolls had no consciousness while the Kyuubi was Naruto's doll, as the unlocked memories has also affected Naruto as well, causing trust to be a major issue for him. Time skip. Three years later, Naruto started to learn the basic of black magic. He was intrigued at the thought of learning four different elements. Lulu regretfully admit that she never learned how to manipulate more elements to the extent that she could with fire, lightning, ice, and water. Back when she was alive, those were considered the main elements, and she had devoted herself to studying them. But nowadays, things were done with water, earth, air, fire, and lightning. I seem to be completely forgotten. As Nerd decided to throw in something new, as he decided to work on the five normal elements, stating that he lived in this time so he should try to learn the ways of this time as well. So with that decided he train in the five ninja elements. The Kayubi was oddly starting to gain respect for the brat. He had an iron solid will. He was almost proud of him but at the moment though, he was the master of his force. As he walked around like a proud leader, the alpha, as a rabbit. Ronin was scared. As he saw one of them in his vision, it was time to hunt. Time skip. Four years later, Naruto, now age 12, had completely mastered all the new basics. As he called them, he had the first tier and the second tier elemental spells down. He was working on the third. He had also mastered a few spells that Lulu knew, including Bio, Dream, Asper, Toad, and Sleep. The spirit had shocked when she saw that Naruto had taken the toad to a new level, turning rabbits into frogs, as the KB was rather pissed off, as it was a decline in the rabbits and more frogs were popping up, but the spell had worn off. After some time, as Naruto allowed his friend to continue to hunt, Naruto and the KB got along rather well, as the fox turned Naruto's mind into a love of fighting, and also he had a sadistic streak about him. Lulu almost shuddered to think. What will happen if he learned break? After finally coming to a logic, Naruto asked something that shocked Lulu. What are spells exactly? I know they are mana constructs to manipulate the elements, but is that all they are? Just patterns of weaving mana into controlling elements. After applying some deep thought to this, she nodded. As Naruto got a smirk on his face, a rather evil one, then isn't it possible that there are limitless spells out there to learn and create? All the one has to do is practice how to weave their mana until it becomes bonded with a certain word. And there you go, a new spell. Lulu couldn't have been more proud of her student at that moment. He had broken down. He had successfully broken down the entirety of black magic to its core and found out its secret. She hadn't even thought of trying that before. As Naruto lifts that twitch into a smile. As he saw her as his big sister and plus his sensei, as he was glad that she was proud of him. Apparently, his mental scars had been a bit more worse than the Kyuubi or Lulu thought. The boy had dropped most emotions after being his training so to see him smile and this happy, well, it made him feel happy for him. This made Lulu got rather overprotective of him. When he walked off alone, she decided to follow him. She didn't know why. But she just became overprotective. With that two and a half years passed, Naruto decided that he was gonna stick it to Kanoha painfully with a fork. He was gonna go back for genuine exams after he was done training and become a Kanoha ninja. He was gonna screw with them from the inside under the Hokage protection who wouldn't do shit to him as he would be afraid of harm in his successor legacy. Oh yes, Naruto knew who his parents were now. After speaking with the Kyuubi in the subject, what said, since you never asked, I thought you didn't care. He learned that his mother was Kushina Uzumaki, and the fourth Akagi was his damn father. The same bastard that seed his feet at birth was also his father. Wow. He had learned that day that was another thing to make fun of Kanoha for. They threw away the beloved fourth Akagi's child, believing that they were doing the fourth a favor by getting rid of the fourth Akagi's child. He laughed at that. They were rather stupid to not realize the resemblance. They would probably see it now after all. 
he had changed a lot over the past years. His training with Lulu had gone splendidly. He was now able to pair up with the Kayubita class, more powerful dangerous magic. He had mastered Lulu's entire spell repertoire, including the powerful, fear magic. He was considered her equal in all things, pertaining to black magic but he was still her junior, in years. She had died at the age of 22 so she was still older than him. She had been feeling strange lately. She was getting a sense of fading away. When she asked Adal about this, he told her she was completing what she had to do for her to pass on. She had kept this a secret away from Naruto as she did not want to worry him. She gave him a book written by one of her former comrades. It was called Fan People and How to Escape Them. It was by the Titus. The boy had raised the eyebrow as he looked towards the book before Lulu and the cube had broke down and they had to teach him about the bird and beast. As Naruto was about 5 feet, 11 inches tall right now, only a bit taller than Lulu by now. His hair had grown out long, he preferred it this way, but it was longer than Lulu expected after it went straight down his back. When asked about this, he told her that he had cast a spell on it to make it poisonous by anyone who tried to harm him by grabbing his hair. As Naruto wanted a completely different look, with his hair so long now it no longer looks spiky, it just falls flat on his back. As him and the fox came up with something with some of the fox power, he was able to change his eyes to a permanent purple. Lulu thought it was pretty, as Naruto was happy that he wasn't blue though. His body type was thin, but not heavily so. As Lulu said he was like a willow branch. His body type was fit for someone with acrobat, as she taught him evasive tactics to bend and twist his body in certain ways to avoid certain attacks. Black mages were never really physical, but he had taught himself. He even taught himself how to run across the trees like ninjas do. He was dressed in black style pants. He was wearing a normal black sleeve shirt, as the sleeves were long enough to hide his hands to make it look cool when he cast spells. The outfit looked fitting on him, but the fox being a joke, saying that he looked like a flat chested woman given his long hair. He had to spend the rest of that day dodging spells. The whisker marks were gone after he transformed the Kyuubi into the plushy toy so he didn't even look like that kid before. As he had this ear about him, an ear of great dignity. It was like a Hayuga. As he had changed completely, he wanted to change after all. One month later, they were five months before he had to go back to Kanuha. Lulu said that she wanted to talk to him. You need to speak to me about something, said Naruto. As Naruto was enveloped in a tight hug, something felt off. She looked like she was about to cry and her body seemed not completely there. As Naruto immediately connected all the dots, ear fade into the afterlife, he said. She nodded softly as she was still holding on to him as tight as she could. A few tears rolled down her face. I'm not sure whether to be happy or sad. I'm finally going to leave the mortal plane and go where I belong, but... I'm gonna miss you Naruto, she said. I finally realized what was keeping me here. I had never had a child I could call my own and I always wanted to raise one. You have fulfilled that spot in my life and now since you have grown old enough to take care of yourself, my life is finally complete. By tomorrow I'll be completely gone. So I wanted to spend this day with you before I left, she said. It has been 11 years since he first met her and up until then he had never cried. As tears started to drop from his eyes, as he hugged her tightly. I'll miss you too, said Naruto. You're the best older sister slash parent I could ever dream of and you took me in when no one else wanted to. I will forever be grateful to you, said Naruto. As Lulu pulled back and kissed him on the forehead, like what she used to do when he was a child. You're all I ever wanted in a son. Please promise me you will take care of yourself. I'm not going to make you promise to pass on the art of black magic because I know you will do what is right. I trust in your decisions. The rest of the day was spent reminiscing over the time that they had spent together. Finally around 3 in the morning, she started to shimmer and fade. Her final words were, I love you Naruto. I'll always be there for you, if only in memory. As Naruto grabbed the plushy doll of the Kyuubi and hugged him, taking solace in his only friend that he had right now. Even the fox was in mourning, as he had come to respect the woman. She could deal out incredible destruction one moment 
and the next be as gentle as a soft, blowing breeze. She was a truly wonderful individual. The next day, Nurta sealed the entire area preventing any trespassers from desecrating the resting place of Lulu. He created a gleaming ice structure that will never melt, forever be frozen. A structure of Lulu that will forever be there. At the bottom, there was a uh, written words on it. To Lulu, the last black mage, a powerful summoner guardian, and a true mother. It was burned into the ice that will forever stay there and never melt. As Naruto picked the fox up, we looked towards him. We're going to travel all over the fire country for the next four months, said Naruto. And for the next four months, the third Okage was gotten reports from a tall, blonde teenager who was carrying a stuffed fox all over the fire country. Four months later, Naruto, now 15 as his birthday had passed, he stood outside the gates of Konoha. He was waiting for the damn gate guard to realize someone was there and open the gate. As Naruto placed the Kyuubi down after several minutes, the fox smirked as he rushed forward. A passing traveler would later tell his friends that he saw a blonde placed on a plushy fox toy who broke down the gates of Konoha, but his friends would tell him that he was drunk. But he had promised to them that he was not drunk as the fox had a triumphant look on his face. Damn right, I'm the goddamn knight here, fox. You think a damn gate can stand up to me? The next instant, Naruto was surrounded by a group of Anvus. What? No one was paying attention to open the gate. Most of the Anvus almost fell on their faces. They looked towards the sleeping gate guard, who had rushed out as he looked towards the massive gates that were now lying on the ground. As they turned back towards the blonde intruder, he was gone. Not even a footprint. As the captain flashed towards Hokage's office. Meanwhile, as Naruto was sitting, as he was waiting for the old man to be free up, as the secretary was glaring at the toy in his hand, asked him how dare he bring something like that into Kanuha. As Naruto looked down towards the fox toy, before looking back up at her, you're a rather stupid individual. If you want to take your anger out in a toy, even if it does resemble the demon fox, wow, give yourself a pat on the back, because your mind must believe that the stuffing to create this doll must be made out of 99% evil and 1% demon. I hope you're proud of yourself for turning your blind hatred on a toy. The woman was shocked at how this attractive blonde man could tell her politely how she was stupid and get away with it before she could jump up a reply. It was better if he go to Hokage himself. If his secretary was that stupid to take her anger out in a toy, could she be trusted to do her job correctly? After nodding towards the two Anvus guarding the door, he knocked as he heard a enter. As he entered, a man was pointing at him saying that he broke down the gate. As Naruto looked towards his toy, before looking back up, your person at the gate was doing his job inadequately and was too busy snoring on the job to open the gate for me, so I let myself in. If I was truly an enemy, I would have killed him on my way in. No wouldn't I, said Naruto. As the man was sputtering in disbelief at the blonde teen's audacity, if you can't do your job professionally, then quit now before you cause unnecessary deaths. I have something important to speak with the Hokage about, so kindly remove yourself and premises before I help you out in that regard, said Naruto. The young would stare in disbelief before pulling himself up at his full height that was 5 feet 8 inches, trying to look as dangerous as possible. As he spoke down to the civilian who dare try to threaten him an Anvu captain, what right do you think you have to order me around? He could swear that the toy was smirking at him. But that wasn't possible, it was a toy. As Naruto looked behind the man, seeing the open window, before he kicked the man in the stomach, as the Anvu was not fast enough to react, as he was sent sailing before he crashed in a building outside, he was knocked out cold. Harrison was about to call his Anvus until Naruto closed the windows and door. Before you try to call your Anvus on me, I have done nothing wrong. He asked me what right I have. I have the right of being a diplomatic individual within Kanoha. And not a citizen, said Naruto. As I am not under any of your laws, and he was threatening my authority, so I dispatched him in the best way. That befitted him, said Naruto. He really should learn to do his job accordingly. I came here to apply for genuine exams. As I've been traveling for the past 12 years, Harrison was shocked as he had to admit the teen had been a political loophole. Although the way he spoke, it reminded him too much of Itachi. As he glanced towards a fox in his arm, 
He realized that this was the man he was trying to track down for some time now. As he placed a silence and seal on the room, he put an edge of authority on his voice as he spoke. I need your name as well as your age and I need you to accompany me to the council room for us to discuss whether or not you are allowed to join the academy for the exam. Oh, said Naruto. My name is Naruto, age 15. The pipe that hears him was about to light up, drop. As he looked at the boy, his golden hair, the fox in his arm, his tan skin, there was no way that this was the same Naruto that disappeared 12 years ago. Naruto had whisker marks blue eyes and he did not know about the fox and his facial structure did not match. He had to ask, in his surname he said. As Naruto picked up the toy and he brought it up, what do you think? Should I tell him said Naruto as he was speaking to the fox. Yeah sure, it would be a kick in the pants for him. He wasn't froze at that. The toy spoke. My original name was Namikaze Uzumaki, Naruto. I gave up my surname years ago when this village abandoned me. As I was announced dead there isn't shit that you can do about it Hokage-san said Naruto. I am currently not a citizen due to my status of death. By the way you won't tell the Yamanaka to keep working on their memory jutsu since the one day he was on me. From your orders only locked away my memories. It did not erase anything. Sir Tobi couldn't believe what he was seeing. His eyes went towards a fox plushie on Naruto's shoulder. Harrison frowned as he focused on the toy. So that was as Naruto saw the frowning man face. Naruto frowned as everything in the room was blown back. The papers Harrison had to apply chalk to his feet to stay still. Before you even say anything about the doll, he has actually been a friend to me more than anyone in Kanoa. I earned his respect through my hard work. And if you can't see past the fact that he's a demon, then I'll simply go to Kumu or the stone. I'm sure they will adore having someone like me there. At this, Harrison perked up a bit. He gave one last glare to the fox toy, who smirked back at him. Before he sighed, he really did need that boy, damn it. He was the only remnant of a successor that he had left. It's mild finally wrapped around the last part of Naruto's statement as he quirked the eyebrow. What do you mean someone like you? Aside from the Jinjuki status, I don't believe there is anything much different about you, he said. As Naruto smirked his eyes flashed in amusement. I guess you could say I have a bloodline. And it's all on me. The KUB has been in that doll for the past 12 years. And he has nothing to do with it. I am highly proficient in using elemental techniques without hand signs. And I can do techniques in tandem with my doll to cause large environmental destruction. Harrison was quite shocked about this. There was no record of a bloodline like that ever. Perhaps becoming a Jinjuki had changed part of his DNA and recreated it. The fox did spread destruction after all. Very well. I will allow you to take Jenny test tomorrow. Will you accompany me too? The council room, he said. Harrison walked over as he was feeling regret. As he brought Naruto towards the room. Time skip. Council room. The both of them appear in the room through a sun chain. The council looked towards the team before. They noticed the fox as they glared at it. As Naruto noticed their glare, he raised his hand. Water G, he said. As he dropped it, water was blasted on them. Not enough to really hurt them in any way, but just soaked their clothing as it snapped their gaze on him. The Hokage was shot, but he quickly regained his composure as the council members were drenched. We are gathered here to assess the possibility of this young man becoming a Kanoha Shinobi. As you can see, as a bloodline ability that allow him to use elemental affinities without even creating hand signs. The entire council parked up at this even though he had just wet them up. As Naruto stepped up, I'll say this right now, I'll not be a breeding stock for you or anyone else. If you try to control me in any way, I will not only destroy the attempt, but the one who ordered it. And also a large section of the residential era that they resigned in. This is not a threat, this is a promise. I will not tolerate being brown nose by bloodline lovers. I refuse to have a harem to create super soldier for you people. So you can take your CRA, your clan restoration act and shove it. If you have something of a obligation against this, direct them to my doll while I prepare. Something of the lightning nature to permanently silence you. The council was gaping. This boy had just soaked and he threatened them. Before you all, protested Naruto. You are all currently soaked. You must remember that. If I so choose even a slight shock, could cause a heart to stop. 
Like I said, I refuse to be your puppet. Your breathing stock. I wouldn't be an employee, but a slave. As here is an understand Naruto. Ideology that he was going by, but Donzo, being the man that he was, couldn't let this go by without a chance. Surely, we can come to some sort of deal to integrate your bloodline in Konoha. The fox started a growl, surprising the people that he could move. As Naruto said a single word, Flare. Donzo looked down as flames started to gather at his feet before they burst upwards and incinerated him. They burn him to ashes, killing Donzo. The entire council ended up in an uproar, shouting for Naruto's death as he had just murdered Donzo. And not to mention with him having that animated fox toy, they didn't like it one bit. As Naruto turned to leave, the arrogant side of the civilian council asked him where he was going. I am leaving somewhere where I am going to be treated as a person. Perhaps Kumo, the stone, or the sand, said Naruto. Yes, they were still pissed that he came in here and did kill someone and not to mention. Talk like he owned the place, but they couldn't let that bloodline of his escape. As it was too valuable, Kanoha needed it. So they offered him wealth, money, property, woman. As he gave them a glare to shut them up. You only want me for my bloodline. You people sicken me. At how you raise all of those on a bloodline that pedestal, stole. Pampering their every wimp. However, I have made a decision. I'll become a shinobi to this village, if only to spite all of you. I'll work directly in the Hokage, meaning you can't sink your claws in me. You people are worse than Kyubi ever was. At least he probably had a good reason. Where you people believe that you are so condescending, that you can control everything. Now that I think about it, he had a damn good idea trying to destroy this village. Hokage-sama, I'll be going to the academy exam tomorrow. Any attempts to blackmail cohorts. Or, force me to anything by the council will be met with brutal and lethal force. As the fox is underground laughing, as he reels in to enjoy himself, as Naruto picked him up before he vanished. As here's in size, he looked where his old teammate once sat. But that wasn't what frightened him, though. It was not Donzo's death. Donzo has done so many things, he probably deserved that, but it was Naruto's power. I hope you people are proud of what you have done. That boy. I'm not even sure how powerful he is. The way he strike in here. As Harrison realized that Naruto did not fear any of them including him or the Anvus. Meaning that he had the power to do. Well, drastic. Things if he come down to it. He will have to make sure this is taken rather cautiously. So that things did not escalate and not to mention. The fox on his shoulder, he wasn't sure if the thing could just suddenly transform and destroy the village. Like what he tried to do in the past. This was bad. Really, really bad. But guys, it'll be instant right here. If you want to see next part and do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on the notifications if you're posting. But I'm off and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.